Okay, so we ran the lines uh, nice and clean. <clears throat> the Mark 7s on a lot of the new cars, like Audis, um, majority of new cars after like 2015 and stuff, and even some of the earlier ones, um, they have nice shields on the bottom of the cars. Uh, like I previously discussed in the GTI video when I begged my GTI, um, running the lines was pretty simple. Um, I like to run the lines um, on the exterior. Why do I like to run the lines on the exterior? Well, I've worked on M4s, like two week old M4s that came from the dealer, uh, you know, $125,000 car. Uh, I've, I've assisted with Lambos, I've assisted with various, uh, with various huge builds. And I'll tell you guys one thing. If you're running everything through the interior, obviously you have to remove panels. To remove panels perfectly and put them back without the clips breaking, virtually impossible. At least if, and I've seen some pretty shitty installations because a lot of the shops, and this is, you know, you get what you pay for. A lot of the shops will just pull out all the clips from the interior, kind of leave, leave it in because they're rushing. You know what I mean? That's the reason why you're paying 400 bucks is because you're in line with uh, 10 other cars, you know, or 500 bucks for installations because just they don't care. They charge you a little amount of money just so if you come back and bitch, they'll slap it in your face and tell you in your face, oh, you know, I only pay this much and this much. Anyways, so I like to run it on the exterior. Why? It's because it's really simple to go back to stock. For example, a lot of the guys lease their cars or financial situation changes. They have to take it back to the dealer or anything like that. It's just so much easier to remove it from the exterior. If you're running everything through the interior, say you know, um, you need to get to the lines or anything like that, or say you take your car for an audio installation or anything like that, and they rupture a line or they cut something because something is stuck in, you know, that's my preference for running the lines on the exterior, just because it's really easy to go through. Now, a lot of people are like, well, you're running lines on the exterior, you know, you're exposed to a lot more elements. I mean, the lines we use and the lines um, that are out there that you should be, you guys should be using something which are dot rated or dot. There is no real certification or approval, but they're sort of like you know manufactured to the to the to the, to the dot specifications, and you can see that because on all the airlines, it will tell you, you know, um, SAE Type Three A, and somewhere here there should be. Uh, Parker Hennepin Air, Air Brake Line SAE extruded in the USA. Somewhere on the line, anyways, it will say that it's got a dot, uh, dot rating or dot, um, yeah, DOT. There you go. DOT 0922. Literally, guys, some suppliers for air suspension, even some major brands, will give you a line that supposedly is dot rated or dot approved. They're flimsy. They're just not as good quality as these ones. These ones are, if you see, they have an external bit and then they also have an internal bit. It's sort of like a multi-layer line. It's not just like one block line. Some of the cheaper lines, and I have a video on that, um, don't have that. So they're just not as rigid, just enough rigidity and just enough uh, flexibility. If you guys are trying to find line, we have some on our website or you guys can go to like um, various suppliers and uh, try to look for dot rated, you know, uh, preferably made in the USA. I mean, why not, right? But um, that's the big deal why I like to run the lines on the exterior. It's just because it's really easy to revert the car back. Take it to any mechanic. It's a lot easier than for them to have to go into your interior and try to go through your panels. Clip the panels again, break more clips. And then you take it to the dealer and the dealer is like, ah, oh, look at all your clips are broken. This car has been installed too many headaches so pay you know keep that in mind when you guys are doing your installation so anyways i like to run on a lot of the um, major cars and some of the older civics you don't have that you only have a vent on one side but uh, a lot of these guys have vents on the on the sides of the cars like right here behind the bumper um so you know try to keep that in there and try to tuck it in nice and neat go pull it through um underneath the car and then you're able to sort of get through behind the bumper um, don't leave too much slack behind the bumper because if you're at a body shop and you get hit, you don't want uh, that line to get too ruptured. So just be very careful. So you're running it behind the bumper. Don't just put a whole bunch of line behind the bumper. You know, and just try to try to be frivolous with your line or try to you know conserve your line. Like that's another thing. A lot of kit suppliers will give you like 60 feet of line. You know what? 60 feet of line is cool for a small car, but if you're running a large sedan, it's a lot longer. It should last you, but there's been many instances where it's just going to be enough, just going to be enough to basically run your 
um, lines into the sides, but not enough to, for example, have an extra line running from your manifold to you, like a purge valve or anything like that. So, so pay uh, pay attention to that. Um, we're gonna line an addition. We're gonna run an additional line behind the bumper, simply because a lot of my clients, what they like is they like to have a very loud air out, and by running an exhaust line right to the back of the bumper, will provide sort of that extra noise. Um, when they're airing out a car show, so it's kind of neat. So we're gonna run an additional line here that I can connect up when I do his uh, the setup for the exhaust port, so that way it'll be uh, loud on the inside and loud on the outside. I know that's what a lot of the younger kids like these days. So we're gonna do that up. Um, but anyways, I wanna show you guys how I ran it. So I ran it behind the bumper, nice and neat, not too much of, a, of an overhang or any kind of a line going in there. Again, keep in mind that you you know if you get hit in the back, um, the line will probably survive, but your your bumper, when the body shop takes it off or anything like that, you know, you don't have too much dangling line in there. So just be very sort of, you know, nice and neat. Um, we have it going through here. Very simple because uh, this car has a subframe going right behind here. Bada bing, bada boom, right into the bag. Very, very, very minimal uh, amount of running. You know, you don't have to uh, 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 bolt anything up. Everything's nice and sturdy. It's attached to the uh, subframe behind here. Away from the exhaust, even if you went back to the stock's exhaust, you'd still, be, uh, you'd still be okay. So away from the exhaust, no issues, so we're good there. Running along here, running behind here, going with the uh, uh, rear brake line around here, and you got the beautiful panels. And then just really easy back here, just to hide the lines underneath the panels. So I love these cars, and then through the panels, um, you can keep routing it, and it will uh, protrude out uh, to the front right here and have it nice and neat behind the shield so everything's protected it's literally protected from the elements there's really no issues um, you don't want to have too much slack underneath the car as well too simply because of the fact that if you're driving in winter and the car is low because you have high snow you don't want a line to be dragging and and pull out like these lines will uh, survive like the push to connect fittings or compression fittings whichever one you choose to uh, use We'll survive it, but you just want to try to anticipate a lot of the issues that might happen. And I found that a lot of shops don't anticipate because they're just interested in kind of getting you in and out uh, in the quickest amount of time. And, and you know, they, they don't even mind, you know, trying to beat somebody else's uh, price down just to get you in, you know, so later they can um, mess you up with additional costs. And every time you have an issue, you're going to come back. And I don't know, we, well, we're going to do a separate video on, on shop practices, uh, you know, uh, some other time. But anyways, so right into here, the rears are, uh, I already showed you guys, and they all nicely protrude out into the trunk. Label your line so you know which one's which. Into here, ready to be uh, organized a lot more, and nice and neat, nice and clean, not a lot of crap, and uh, just nice and organized. So we're gonna continue on with uh, doing the lines and uh, start setting up the trunk, and uh, stay tuned. All right, everyone, so just continuing on with uh, Kaz's setup. Um, so the fronts are in, ladder lines are, uh, are in. So one of the most important things I like to do is I like, I like to actually test to see how the suspension and the turn and all that is gonna work, whether the ladder lines are gonna get bind in the way or anything like that. So I have my assistant here, or you can do it with your friend. Basically, uh, I have a benefit of being on the lift, but you could do it on jack stands. And uh, what I'm doing is while the car is running, I'm able to sort of move back and forth to see how the suspension is gonna work, whether anything's gonna get bind, whether the uh, you know end links, anything like that are gonna get bound or not. So if you could turn to the left, please. So that way it kind of gives you an idea how things are gonna work when the, when the, when the person is gonna be driving. So it's kind, of, it's kind of different when you just kind of slap it all together you know, whereas you can actually simulate a ride on the lift. Can you go all the way to the right, please? Yeah, so that way we know everything's kind of moving. It's not touching. The fittings are not touching. There's plenty of clearance. You can anticipate the movement of the wheel and vice versa. Can you turn to the left again, please? That way, if, for example, you have a tire going in, you know, this is not going to get in the way. You got plenty of clearance here and out on the exterior uh, when you're putting in the wheel. So it's kind of a cool thing to do. I don't know if a lot of guys do it. If you do do it, it's a good idea to sort of, while well, I have it on the jack stand and uh, everything's kind of hooked up to uh, turn on the car and uh, simulate sort of movement to see how it's gonna go. And uh, that way you'll get a better feel of whether, you know, things are gonna kind of, you wanna anticipate 
that if you do an installation, you know, you're not going to have failures just because you didn't do the installation correctly. So I hope this kind of helps and it's just a little bit of a tip for you guys. And we continue on with Kaz's setup. Now I got the wiring done. I'm going to be focusing on doing his trunk setup and we'll put it in, uh, air it out, go for a test drive and call it a day. All right, so I skipped a little bit ahead and I did uh, Kaz's setup. So we did a, a kind of a clean hardline setup here with two 444 compressors. We're gonna put that in his trunk and uh, that's it. That pretty much completes the whole setup. The car is bagged. Uh, when I get a chance, I'll do an update vlog in regards to how it looks like. Um, it's dark outside now, so unfortunately I can't really take images of it, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll definitely uh, try to fill you guys in on what's going on. Kind of neat. This turned out pretty pretty unique. I like uh, working on hard lines, so uh, bada-boom, bada-boom.